Hey guys, it's Meadow. Yes, Meadow. And I've been away for a little while. I got married. I just took my ring off for uh, to make this little chuck roll. But uh, so it's been a little while since I've been here, and I, I wanted to do a movie. I mean, another video, and uh, just get something out there. So I'm gonna try not to preach, try not to do my normal thing, and just cook something. It's a uh, shredded beef. Shredded beef. I'm using a chuck roast, a boneless chuck roast that I got on sale for $2.75 a pound from Safeway. Really easy. It's really similar, almost exactly the same thing as my boneless skinless chicken thighs. And I promise I will have some other crazy uh, recipes or something at some point. But again, my idea, is to, my idea is to be economical, to be simple, and to cook in enough bulk to have good proteins, good foods already ready in the fridge so you can grab stuff out and make these quick and easy kind of fitness meals. Now the boneless chuck, the chuck, the shoulder of the beef is definitely not your leanest part of the cow. It's actually probably one of the more fatty parts. I like it for the flavor. But in my opinion, uh, that's not where the problem is and a lot of people getting fat isn't fat and it's definitely not fat from meats it's the portion sizes it's eating all crap you know ice creams and all these things that aren't giving your your body fuel so if you eat something that's a good portion size like we've been talking about you should be okay with with having a little fattier piece of meat but you'll also see when once it's cooked what I do to kind of uh, lean it out and drain it a little bit before we go to serve it but anyway I would use this that said you could use any cut of meat in the crock pot. I used to work as a butcher, worked as a meat cutter for a long time, and people would always ask me, we get the biggest kick out of it, you know, what's the best cut of meat for, a, for the crock pot? You would laugh because anything, it all turns out the same, pretty much. Somebody might try to, to argue that too, but really it's all the same. So buy what's on sale. If you want something leaner, buy something leaner, but I would always just get a roast. You can get pieces, short ribs, boneless short ribs, whatever's on sale, bone in short ribs. Uh, and just throw it all in. It doesn't have to look like a pretty roast. In fact, um, I'll, I'll show you as I pick it up, but this is cut into two sections. This was a bigger roast. I pulled a little piece off of it for us to have some little steaks last night. And uh, maybe I'll do that again. So all I have, same kind of thing. I have these uh, Mexican recipe stewed, sliced, mild chili and Mexican seasoned tomatoes. So I got one can of those. And I think I did this before too. I just kind of rinse out the can. And I don't fill it with water, it's just a little bit, and I add that little bit of water too. So I get something in the bottom of the pan before I even, the bottom of the crock pot before I even start. And then I'll add one of my pieces of meat. And I kind of like to keep a clean hand and a dirty hand when I'm doing this stuff so I can wash it at the end. So my left hand is now going to become my dirty hand. Uh, you can see how that was in two pieces. It doesn't matter, it's all going in the crock pot. It's all going to end up shredding and making some nice little beef. I don't know what we'll do with it later. Maybe some tacos or something but uh, I'll show I'll, I'll put something in there and then this was there was another piece of this roast down here that I pulled off to make some other little steaks with it so I just shoved that all in there and then I have the rest in my, you know the um, rest of my ingredients so that was the one can of tomatoes and then I had another can and these are and I'll write all the ingredients down below like I've done before 14 and a half ounces in a can but really don't stress it. You know, I would use anything. The other day I made this, it turned out really good, and I just had some uh, pico de gallo that I made left over. And just used, you know, a nice, you know, about a can's worth in here. And then another can of just, I think, just stewed tomatoes. So don't let not having an ingredient stop you from, from making it. Just throw meat in a crock pot, make sure there's a little bit of liquid in there. It'll shred after a little while and it's going to be a good source of protein as long as you eat the right portion size and a good balanced meal and that's all we're trying to do. Um, these are some diced green chilies and this is a four ounce can. Uh, I just dump the whole can in there and again just rinse it out and get a little water. And then I go to my spices and I wouldn't worry if you don't have you know, one of these or some of these. But I like to use dry spices in the crock pot. This is a little bit of garlic powder. I don't measure. I'll probably put these down as tablespoons or teaspoons, but you know, maybe a tablespoon of garlic powder, teaspoon of this dried cilantro. That was another cilantro. We're not using that. Um, this is a little oregano, dried oregano. 
you really can't go wrong. You know, if it sounds like it might be added to Mexican food, try it. Uh, this is paprika, right? Like paprika. Chili powder, a little bit of chili powder. I don't salt and pepper, and I don't put anything too spicy in here, because I figure you can always spice it up after. You know, once you make it and you put it on a taco, depending on what you're eating, you can always add a little spice. Later, you can't take it out. So that's it, I'm gonna put this on high, and then later on I'll show you what I do with it. Okay, I'm back, and my roast is done. Uh, there's a lot of liquid in here when you're done with it. I like my shredded beef to not have this much liquid in it. You could use this, you could take the roast out, shred it, and use the, um, what's left as a broth if you want to make a big soup. But I'll make a soup when I make a soup. I make enough meals in the crock pot that I'm not going to think about it. I just toss it. So I get this little pan and I'm going to use this pan to kind of store my meat once I shred it too. So I kind of ladle out as much of that liquid as I can get. I don't go crazy. I'm not trying to kind of make this bone dry, but I take as much as I can and uh, scoop it out and then dump it down the sink. And before I forget, let me see, uh, this is now, it's now about 7 o'clock, and I think I started this about noon, and it was on high, so I don't really even pay too much attention to the time normally. I just throw it in there, and then when I come back later, if it's done, it starts to shred apart. So, I'm not going to show you the meal I'm going to make with it yet, I'm just going to take a piece of this meat out of here, so you can see it. I'll show you what I do with it, and then probably tomorrow or something, I'll take the meat out of the fridge and I'll make something with it. But I do have a vacuum sealer, a food saver bag, and I'll use that a lot of times. So there's probably another six times again as much meat as it right in front of me. So I'm definitely not going to eat that in one meal, right? Um, I'd probably eat less than this, and then. You just take two forks and it should start pulling right apart. And I mean, really, really easy, really tender. So, now what I was talking about as far as the moisture, this is all, uh, I, I like my shredded beef to be a little more dry than this, almost like it was a dry roast and not a crock pot roast. So, my trick and what I do, and one more thing just while I'm thinking of it, anytime you get a roast, there's like this, and it sounds disgusting, but this kind of connective tissue, this silver skin we called it. And, uh, as the meat starts to separate from it, I'll just like make a little pile of it on the side and then throw it in the trash. Um, you'll know when you start peeling this apart, if you come across something that looks like you wouldn't want to eat it, you probably don't. So just set that to the side. But other than that, this stuff just pulls right apart. So again, I like it kind of dry. So what I do, or a little more dry, I don't. I don't want that to come across funny because I don't want dry meat, obviously, right? But I also don't want it to taste like I just pulled it out of a stew or a soup, which is essentially kind of what I did. So you saw those two pieces that I just pulled out. And I've got, you know, that much shredded meat just from that, which is, that's a few meals for me. Uh, so what I do is I just start storing it back in this pan the one that I was using to, to drain all that liquid out. And I'm kind of skipping a couple steps that I might actually do, but um, this is the gist of it, because I might put it in the fridge, store it, and then take it back out. But if I was going to make this, I'd put this in the pot. Then when I heat this, I cook this back up, and it kind of starts to dry it back out again, or um, evaporate some of that moisture that's in there and make it more like the shredded beef that you're probably used to eating. But that's it. There, there is a lot of, uh, from the tomato and the salsa stuff, still in here that I would dump back in here too and then s stir it around. So with that shredded beef, I would then use that either for a taco or just to put with some rice or uh, my vegetables. But uh, that's about it. There's a ton more. I'm going to shred it up, but I won't make you watch. And that's, that's shredded beef. All right.
Catch you later.